She is a pediatric sleep consultant and the owner of the Happy Sleep Company. With us right now is Erin Yunker. Good afternoon, Erin. Good afternoon. Wonderful to have you on the, uh, the program. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, keeping up sleep basically is what we're going to be talking about, right? Sleep Making sure for babies and sleep. toddlers and preschoolers. Grandparents? And well, grandparents, we were going to focus today on some of the things that grandparents can do to help their own children okay. with their children. So to help their grandbabies sleep and to talk about some things that maybe we do or use now for baby sleep that our grandparent, that the grandparents may not have, okay. you know, when they were raising their own children and some things that can help grandparents sort of get on track with what their children might be doing with their little babies and Which toddlers. Which is interesting. Yeah. So it wouldn't be like just like mom, like looking in all the time and telling you what to do with your baby, right? No, exactly. It's more the other way around where, you <laughs> yeah. know, you're as a 25 to 40 year old which is sort of my main client base you you are working with your own parents the grandparents of the baby to say well this is what some of the things that we're doing now in 2017 oh, with see. baby sleep and how you can help me out and and be on board with that I see okay so tell us about the happy sleep company so the happy sleep company uh, I, I'm the owner I am an infant and toddler sleep consultant so essentially what that means is I work with very very tired moms and dads to help them help their little ones learn healthy sleep habits so how to sleep all the way through the night, how to take long restful naps for babies who are otherwise maybe waking up many multiple times a night or having trouble napping during the day and things like that so the whole family can ultimately end up really well rested. It's got to be a, a challenge though uh, to have a career like this because you, you must see so many parents that are just sleep deprived. Yes, so I see a lot of parents who are really exhausted, everything from relationship challenges to you know anxiety, frustration, nodding off at work or at home mm -hmm. and all of that kind of thing and so we really, I mean, I find that once I work with a family and everyone is getting healthy sleep, the entire family unit is happier oh, once good. baby or toddler is now restfully and peacefully sleeping. Good. Okay. We have to respect, as, as your notes say here, the sleep stuff. Yeah. So tell us about the sleep stuff. So the sleep stuff is stuff that we use maybe now that wasn't used 30 years ago that when I'm working with a client, they might say to me, well, my mom, you know, grandma or my dad, grandpa, says, why does your baby wear that thing to bed? Or, you know, why is it always so dark in the room? Yeah. Shouldn't your baby learn to sleep when it's really bright outside and that kind of thing? So it's all the stuff that we, we use to help our babies sleep better. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those things, first of all, are sleep bags. So sleep bags have become very popular in sort of the last 10 years or so. And they came about, they're also referred to as wearable blankets. Mm -hmm. So they came about when a lot of information started to come to light about the safety hazards associated with blankets in cribs, okay. because blankets can cause a suffocation hazard for mm -hmm. babies um, if they go up over your baby's head. So a wearable blanket or a sleep bag just goes on the baby and their little head comes out here and the little arms come out here, but it cannot go up over their their face or their head, so it's not a suffocation hazard, but okay. it still keeps baby nice and warm and cozy and safe. And keeps them super adorable. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're adorable cute. patterns, uh, they're adorable colors, they're really great. And uh, they're also really good sleep cues. So as a sleep consultant, I love sleep bags because when it goes on your baby and then you read your baby a little story and you put your baby down for their nap or nighttime, helps your baby's body and mind process I'm going to bed now. It's mm -hmm. time to go to sleep because I've got my sleep bag on and I've read my story and I'm in this crib thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's adorable. Uh, what, what exactly do we have here? So this is like a darkener for... Yeah, for this is a portable blackout blind. So just at home in general, I recommend, um, you know, that the room be really, really dark for baby's sleep. Okay. Newborns might sleep anywhere and everywhere under the bright sunlight or artificial lights or whatever, but as your baby gets a little older and starts to have sleep patterns that are more like an adult, okay. much like an adult, they want to sleep in a nice dark room mm -hmm. And you know where it's not so stimulating. So at home, blackout blinds, blackout curtains are a great idea in your child's nursery. When you're traveling, say to have a sleepover at grandma's house, mm -hmm. a portable blackout blind is a really good option. So this one is fantastic. It's called the Grow Anywhere blind. Mm. It uh, sticks into the window with suction cups, and then you can make it bigger or smaller with the Velcro tabs. And that way, you can just stick it up in the window, have a good nap for your baby, an afternoon nap yeah. without the sun shining in the room, and then take it down from grandma's window when the nap is over. I'm curious. Is this uh, affordable? Depends on your uh, definition well, of affordable. Well, this runs about okay. sixty to seventy dollars. Okay. Well, the depending reason why, on why. I, the reason why I ask is because mm. is it cheaper than Venetian blinds? Because I could probably just use this in my apartment. Yeah, you could. The only problem is, <laughs> it, I mean, you do have to sort of stick it up it's and fine. take it down instead of being able with Venetian blinds to just quickly <laughs> open them it's when than you putting do up want. Up a Canada light. flag, right? It's true. Yeah, it's okay. true. So yeah, you Classy could. Uh, I find it. You know, I find that it's a really good investment for sleep. <laughs> this is one of my favorite investments for our babies or adults. Yeah. Sleep. My husband and I take this even when we go on trips without my daughter, and we want a hotel. Room that. or whatever to be darker, we take this along. I just love that. The importance of nap time, how important is it? I mean, when a, when a baby is, is ready to sleep, it's time to sleep, right? It's incredibly important. A yeah. lot of people are under the, the assumption that 
naps are kind of a bonus and you should just really focus on your baby's nighttime sleep or your child's nighttime sleep. Naps are not a bonus. Naps are essential to healthy sleep. Mm -hmm. Research very clearly shows that the better rested a child is during the day, the better they are going to sleep at night. So it's really important to respect those naps and not just keep a child up all day long or a baby especially who still needs naps up all day long and then expect them to have a healthy restful sleep at night. Okay. They're going to have a much more difficult time getting in a nice deep restful sleep at night if they haven't had any proper naps during the day and they're very like wired and over stimulated and agitated when they finally go down for sleep at night. That's amazing. The happy sleep company uh, .ca, based out of Ottawa. Mm -hmm. okay. Based out of Ottawa, I'm available worldwide. I'm working with a family in Kuwait right now Are you? who found me on Google. Um, so with the power of Skype and FaceTime, I work everywhere. That is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for introducing me to this, if yes. not for a child, for myself. Of course. I appreciate that. Uh, Aaron Yunker, pediatric sleep consultant and the owner of the Happy Sleep Company. Thanks for having me. Have a great day, everybody.